Hello, my name is Michael Kramer and today I will present to you information about American Diagnostica Sekisui's range of products for analysis of Adams 13. In this presentation you will learn the following. What is Adams 13? What is TTP? What are ADI Sekisui's products for analysis of Adams 13? I will also present recent scientific information on clinical Adams 13 research. This is part one of two parts and in this part one you will get background information on Adams 13 and thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. What is Adams 13? Adams 13 is an enzyme, a proteinase. Adams 13 belongs to a certain family that is defined by mo certain molecular structures and the name of the family is a disintegrin and metalloproteinase with a thrombosbondin type 1 motif and it's the member 13 of this family and basically Adams 13 is derived from taking certain letters from this complicated and weird name and adding the number 13. The Adams 13 is also known as von Willebrand factor cleaving protease and this points more into the function of this molecule. Basically it degrades large von Willebrand factor multimers decreasing their pro-coagulant activity. In 1994 it was shown that von Willebrand factor is cleaved between tyrosine 1605 and methionine 1606 and these amino acid residues are located in the so-called A2 domain of von Willebrand factor and cleavage was shown to be uh, affected by a metalloproteinase enzyme and very important it was shown that von Willebrand factor cleavage was strong and, and proceeded best when von Willebrand factor was exposed to high shear stress. In 1996 the enzyme was defined at a molecular level by the research groups of Fulan and Tsai independently and it was then named as von Willebrand factor cleaving protease. And later when the molecular structure was even more elucidated uh, it was uh, grouped to this family of these atoms molecules. The next slide shows a schematic drawing of Adams 13 function and interaction with von Willebrand factor and other players in the coagulation system, the endothelium and the platelets. Here you see von Willebrand factor, the A2 domain and Adams 13 uh, cleaving in the A2 domain. You see that the von Willebrand factor molecule mediates interaction between platelets and thereby promotes clotting and when cleavage in the A2 domain occurs this platelet platelet interaction is disturbed. The same happens when platelets are located or bound to von Willebrand factor that is bound to the endothelial surface. Also here um, Adams 13 interacts in an inhibitory manner and uh, von Willebrand factor bound to extracellular matrix also affected by uh, Adams 13 and again a inhibitory or negative influence on platelet platelet interaction. And it is important to know that this happens in particular under conditions of shear stress when von Willebrand factor undergoes certain conformational changes and these binding domains for platelets, endothelium and collagen are exposed and which at the same time also exposes the A2 domain which is then accessible to cleavage by Adams 13. Adams 13 and human disease. It was found that autoantibodies against Adams 13 are the underlying cause of a disease called TTP which is thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura and it was also found that a inherited congenital deficiency of Adams 13 is the underlying cause of the so-called Upshaw Schulman syndrome which is a recurring inherited form of 
HTTP. What is TTP? It's also called the Mushkowitz syndrome. And in TTP, extensive microscopic thrombosis are observed in small blood vessels. This means that TTP is a member of the so-called group of thrombotic microangiopathy, uh, a diseases in which thrombosis occur in the small blood vessels. Again here stated that in these diseases there is spontaneous aggregation of platelets and activation of coagulation in small blood vessels. And the consumption of the platelets during generalized clotting in these diseases results in thrombocytopenia and also uh, red blood cells are damaged due to shear stress in these thrombotic microvessels and when these red blood cells are damaged intravascular hemolysis is observed. That is also another name for this group of diseases, microangiopathic hemolytic anemias. It is important to note that in these diseases there is reduced blood flow in thrombotic vessels and that this results in end organ damage and brain and kidney are particularly vulnerable. The pathogenesis of TTP. Most cases of TTP are due to reduced activity of Adams 13 and which is the, as mentioned before, the metalloprotease responsible for cleaving large multimers of von Willebrand factor into smaller units. Basically, as stated before, von Willebrand factor has procoagulant activity. It links, as we saw in the schematic drawing, platelets, blood clots and the blood vessel wall in the process of coagulation. When large von Willebrand factor multimers persist due to reduced Adams-13 activity, there is an increased tendency for coagulation. In other words, without proper cleavage of von Willebrand factor by Adams-13, coagulation occurs at a higher rate. We have a procoagulant status. This happens especially in the microvasculature, where von Willebrand factor is most active, as mentioned before, and also most sensitive to Adams-13 due to higher shear stress. What are the forms of TTP? There is an inherited form mentioned already. It's called the abscher schulman syndrome. It's based on an inherited defect of Adams-13. Several defects are, are known, either complete loss of the enzyme or dysfunctional mutants. The inherited form makes up about 5 to 10 percent of all cases. And then there is a so-called idiopathic form of TDP, which is basically caused by the inhibition of Adams-13 by antibodies. And since these antibodies are reacting against a body's own molecule, you may call this an autoimmune disease. And there is uh, something called secondary forms of TDP and it is known that some predisposing factors like cancer or bone marrow transplantation, pregnancy and certain medications are associated with an increased risk for TTP. These secondary TDP cases are making up about 40% of all cases. Many thanks for your attention. This will be continued with part 2 in which you will learn more about diagnostics, assays available from ADI Sekisoi and some selected current scientific references.